I've always been interested in the ocean ever since I was little. Around 2009, I was working on some projects and did some research on the island's fisheries, trying to figure out you know, what, what fisheries we have and which is the highest fishery in terms of volume and value and slowly realizing that the conch fishery was the island's biggest fishery and having no idea that that was even a fishery here sort of blew my mind. Our fisheries right now are sort of in a difficult state, especially on the island. Different stocks have declined. There's a lot of pressures that have changed what we can and what we do fish for. Put it on my tab. <laughs> Trying to learn more about the biology of the conch or channeled whelk, I soon realized that there's hardly anything, and most of what was present was done in the 40s. This is our largest fishery, and we hardly know anything about them. So how do we know if the regulations that are in place are actually there doing their job? Yeah, we, we said it on Thursday. Without knowing anything, you can't really learn if the fishery is doing well or not. The fishermen are the ones that know the most. They've seen the changes already over these years. Learning from them and their experiences has really been critical. They want things to be sustained. They don't want to be the ones that have fished it out. Working together on that common line has been um, important. Oh, I see one. I think even the fishermen are excited every time they haul a, a pot. It never really grows old because you, you never know what you're going to find. On my camera, on the trap, there is a temperature sensor. There's also a light sensor so um, I can record the light intensity. I'm trying to figure out just some key things like growth rate, movement, behavior, early life history, reproduction. There's just so many holes in their biology. Okay. From the behavioral footage with the conch cam, it's interesting, you'll, you'll see them come into the pot. Sometimes I'll catch many conchs during the day, other times it'll be at night. Sometimes they'll be really active inside the trap, other times they'll just sit and not move, not even have any interest in the bait. So trying to figure out if that correlates with the time, tide, current, will sort of be the next step in analyzing the data. In order to learn more about their movements, um, I'm using telemetry, so I have acoustic receivers that I have positioned inside and outside of TASMU, and then I have five tagged whelks with acoustic tags, and they're epoxied onto the shell. Wherever they are within the pond, these receivers will be able to hear the ping coming from the acoustic tag and I'll be able to see movement. One of the other projects I've been working on is uh, a growth rate project, so trying to learn how fast the juvenile whelks are growing. And to do that, I've tagged, I think now over 13,000 with small shellfish tags. Anytime a fisherman catches one of my tagged conchs, They'll uh, either save it in a bucket and bring it in and I'll come and meet them and measure it or they'll record the measurement themselves. Getting sort of an average growth rate, how long it takes for a small sublegal whelk to become legal. Also how long it would take 
a small juvenile to reach sexual maturity is of interest and importance in the fishery and can help when the state is setting management regulations. To learn more about fecundity or reproduction, I collected 25 larger females from fishermen here and brought them up to the lab in New Hampshire and placed each female into its own individual tank compartment and fed them as many blue mussels as they wanted and just sort of monitored them with the hope that they would lay egg strings so I could connect that egg string with that female and be able to measure the egg string, record how many embryos, the size, um, and see how it correlated with the female shell size. Two of the females took 13 days and one took 11 days. They don't feed, they don't move, they just focus on producing this egg string and um, the time and energy involved is pretty spectacular. After they laid the egg strings, I then placed them into another tank and hatched out the juveniles. So that's been sort of interesting, trying to figure out how many hatch out of an egg string alive and the timing of all of that. It's been wonderful to sort of spy in on the underwater world day and night through this little camera, just knowing that's such a small window of what's really happening. Yeah, we did well. I'd be very happy if, if this fishery was still operating 20 years from now and people were able to make a living and the whelk populations were flourishing. Fishing is still viable and there's still sustainable ways of doing it. I want this fishery to continue. I don't want this to be the last fishery we have. The research I've collected now is just sort of laying the foundation to figure out ways to do it better and more sustainably. That's the goal, keeping it going for years to come. Okay.